Today, I will be showing you how to verify the maximum stress ANSYS computes on this geometry, which is, has a fixed support on the left side and a moment of 50 newton meters applied on the right hand side. To verify the computed stress result, we will use a stress max equation from O'Rourke's formulas for stress and strain. This formula calculates the max strain using a stiffness coefficient, which is calculated using the inner outer diameter and the radius of the hole in the shaft. So using the diameter, inner diameter, outer diameter, radius, you can work out the four C's, which you then use to work out the stiffness factor. This is then combined into the equation with the outer and inner diameter and the torque applied on the right hand side. This then computes a max stress value of 38.158 megapascals for this geometry. And this is the stress value which we'll compare against what ANSYS computes. Here's the geometry model. We will now generate a basic mesh on the geometry. And then insert the fixed support. And the torque slash moment of 50 Newton meters. And the direction shouldn't matter. And then we insert an equivalent stress result and solve. And this gives us a stress result on our geometry. You can now see that the maximum computed stress is roughly 32 megapascals, which is 6 less than the calculated maximum stress from O'Rourke's formula of stress and strain. I have now applied a body sizing of 6 millimeters to the geometry to create a more refined mesh. This now computes a maximum stress of 35 megapascals, so 3 megapascals closer to the maximum stress calculated using O'Rourke's formula for stress and strain. Now using a body sizing of 4 millimeters, I got an equivalent stress of 37.6 megapascals. This is within a megapascal of the maximum stress calculated using O'Rourke's formula for stress and strain. This fairly well verifies that the result I'm getting from ANSYS is the correct one, as these values are very close. You can also create a fully structured mesh on the geometry using hex dominant method and body sizing. This creates a mesh with a similar amount of nodes as the one shown previously. I've already made a video on how to create a fully structured mesh, which is my last YouTube video. This now gives a maximum equivalent stress of 44, which is a bit further out than the previous mesh, although it's still within a tolerable range. And this structured mesh reduces computational time. To conclude, using Rourke's formulas for stress and strain is a great way to verify the stress results you're getting from ANSYS, although this is only applicable for the selected circumstances that the book covers. Thank you for watching.